My name is Justin Rempel. Welcome to this um, presentation about writing a paragraph. So before we start learning about how to write a paragraph, we better make sure we know what it is. What is a paragraph? It is a group of sentences. That's the shortest, simplest way of putting it. Uh, what is a good paragraph? A good paragraph is not just a group of sentences. It's a group of sentences that we've organized around one central idea. A lot of people ask how long a paragraph should be. Well, that depends. If you're writing dialogue, you know that a new paragraph starts every time there's a new speaker. So it might only be uh, one or two lines long. In general, paragraphs are going to be about three to 10 sentences long, but they can get shorter, they can get longer. Uh, if you're practicing writing paragraphs, um, a good goal is to aim for about five or six sentences. Uh, paragraphs are separate from each other. They're separated um, because each paragraph starts on a new line and the first word is going to be indented. That means there's a space uh, that's blank before the sentence starts. So it looks like something like what you see on your slide where the line starts a little ways in and then the rest of the lines don't. They go all the way to the margin. And then as soon as we start a new paragraph over here, there's a little bit of a blank space, right? Blank space, blank space, blank space. Every time a new paragraph starts, is a blank space called an indent before the sentence and the paragraph begins. How do we make one? Well, I've broken it down into five simple steps. Step one, we identify the idea. This is the central idea that we're organizing our paragraph around. It's kind of your topic for that group of sentences. Step two, write your opening sentence, which is your topic sentence. Step three, write several supporting sentences. Step four, write a concluding sentence to wrap everything up. And step five is to go back, take a look at your writing, edit and revise as needed. Um, this structure is kind of a miniature version of what an essay is. If you write an essay, uh, like a research paper, uh, then you know that you follow the same structure where you introduce your topic, you have several supporting ideas and then a conclusion to wrap everything up. Same thing, just a smaller version in each and every single little paragraph that we write. So let's take a look at these steps one by one and talk about them in a little bit more detail. Um, step one is to identify an idea. So you should know the main point of your paragraph before you start writing. Don't just write, know the purpose of your writing. Um, so say we're writing fiction, um, like a, a story. This is made up writing. Um, our main ideas might be uh, a description of an item. Maybe we're really focusing on a, a person or place or thing that we're describing in that paragraph. Uh, maybe we're really focusing on a character's internal thought, one thought that they have. We write a paragraph about that. Um, maybe it's a character's piece of dialogue with someone else. Uh, every time you have a new speaker, you start a new paragraph. Uh, so your paragraph might be someone talking. It could also be one leg or one um, step in a journey could be described in a paragraph. Uh, so these are all different ideas for what might be the main idea of your paragraph if you're writing fiction. If you're writing nonfiction, which is um, informative writing, your main ideas might be something like uh, one reason for your argument. Um, when we're writing uh, research papers, our main idea is called our thesis. Um, so one reason to support your thesis might be a paragraph. Uh, your paragraph might be one piece of evidence to prove your point. Um, and if you're explaining something in an explanatory paper, it might be one step in the process. Step two, write your topic sentence. Once we know what our main idea is, we can start to communicate it. 
And a good rule of thumb is to open your paragraph by announcing what your main idea for that paragraph is. Um, this helps to communicate clearly. It helps to create interest. Readers should know your topic right away, and they should be curious to hear what you have to say. So for example, um, we're going to use an example of writing a fictional story, and uh, you are going to describe the setting for your story. So let's say it takes place some time ago, 10 years ago, whatever, in your house. So your main idea is your house for this paragraph. That's what you want to structure your paragraph around. Um, so in our opening sentence, we need to let people know what we're talking about. So you could write a sentence something like this. At the time, I lived in an unusually old house. Good. Right away, as readers know what your topic is. It's your uh, house. And notice as a side note how your adjectives or your describing words really help to make things uh, descriptive and build interest. So it's not just a house, it's an old house. It's not just an old house, it's an unusually old house. So right away as we have interest. Step three, uh, write several supporting sentences. So once we've got our topic sentence, we want to expand and elaborate, okay? We want to paint a picture and add in more detail. Uh, the supporting sentences are the body of the paragraph. This is what most of the paragraph is made up out of. So they're very, very important um, because they add supporting details, they add reasons, they expand on your main idea. Uh, we don't want to just hear that you lived in a house, good, moving on. We want to hear about your house. If it's important enough to bring up, it's important to describe in detail. Um, paragraphs should have at least one supporting sentence, uh, but more is, uh, is preferable, more is better. You should write as much as you need to thoroughly explain and support your main idea. Okay, so um, as much as you need so that readers have a good grasp of what's going on. So here's our example. We have our topic sentence from the last slide. At the time, I lived in an unusually old house. And now we're gonna add a few sentences to explain just how old and run down this house was. Um, perhaps at one time, it had looked new and inviting, but not anymore. The south side had sunk so that the whole frame was sitting at an angle. Its red bricks were faded and the mortar was cracking. Shingles were letting go and falling off the roof one by one. So these are really good descriptive sentences that describe uh, how the house is old and falling apart. And it really paints a picture for the reader. Step four is to write a concluding sentence. The job of the concluding sentence is to wrap up the paragraph. So it can summarize things. Uh, sometimes it connects to the next paragraph. Sometimes it takes things in a surprising new direction. Um, so we've got a paragraph about this old house. We can end it in a few different ways. And depending on how we end it, I can really change the flavor of what we're writing about. So for example, we could have a concluding sentence that says, I had to leave that house as soon as possible. Okay, well, now we're telling a story about how I live in an old house. I don't like it. I don't like that it's falling apart. I need to leave. But if I use this concluding sentence, I love that old house for all its character. Now we are telling a very different story about how I appreciate uh, the old house because it's been through a lot and I like that. Um, we could have this concluding sentence. The worst part was the ghost in the attic. Well, now we've taken the story in a completely different direction. Uh, we've described all of these rough features of how the house is falling apart, but even worse than all the falling apart is the ghost that I have in my house. Now I'm telling kind of a, a horror story. Here's a different example. It should have come as no surprise then when the house collapsed on me. All right, now we've got uh, a good idea of what our story is about and we're headed in a new direction. This old house I've just finished describing collapsed. Well, how did that happen? Uh, did, did I survive? Um, was I okay or was I hurt? This all builds interest and keeps the reader moving along into the next paragraph. Step five, this is important, edit and revise. 
So once you're done your paragraph, go back to edit. The first step is just to get words out, words on the page. Uh, but you want to make sure that you go back, read over your work again. It really helps to read your writing out loud. Make sure that it makes sense. Uh, make sure you've said everything you want to say. If you need to add anything, take anything out, make any changes, now's the time to do it. I do want to give you an example with a paragraph that's nonfiction. So we were looking at a fiction paragraph from a story, um, but oftentimes we're writing um, pieces that are nonfiction. They're informative or they're explanatory. Uh, I've given you an example here that's writing about health and nutrition, good healthy things to eat. Vegetables are a healthy food choice. They contain plenty of nutritious vitamins and minerals. Eating vegetables regularly can lead to many health benefits. These benefits include lowering blood pressure and reducing the risk of heart disease. People should try to eat at least a couple servings of vegetables every day. Okay, so we've got our topic sentence, vegetables are a healthy food choice that tells us what our paragraph is about, uh, vegetables and why they're good for us. Uh, the next few sentences are supporting sentences. They're giving reasons why uh, vegetables are healthy. This is all good information. So all these sentences here are just good supporting sentences. And then the final sentence is a concluding sentence. And the reason why it wraps up this paragraph nicely is because it gives you a suggestion of what you can do with this information. People should try to eat uh, a couple servings of vegetables every day. Here's a good recommendation for how to use this information.